Hello, Internet. You probably, you bet, you, you, you might, you probably might be asking yourself, what the heck is this? Vacation saga? I thought we were going to Vegas. Long story short, unforeseen circumstances beyond our control kept us from filming this week. Also, next week's 4th of July, so we're probably gonna push Vegas back another week. With no video this week, I instead decided to post The Vacation Saga. You may or may not be familiar with a series of videos we did earlier this year. Airport, airplane, Hawaii, resort, cruise, Alaska, train, escape, Yeti, hockey, and BBEG. Anyway, some people asked for it in the comments, so I cut it together. By the way, I'm considering doing this for with the, the same thing for Florida. Would it put all the Floridas together in one volume back to back? So let me know if, if you think that that's something you want me to do. We hope you enjoy it. See you next week. Man shorts. After much deliberation, the three of you have decided on Hawaii as your vacation destination. Now you just have to get there. Do you both have your itineraries? I don't need either of you goons slowing me down. Just relax. Everything is taken care of. The Uber is scheduled to get us to the airport three hours before our flight. Everything's gonna be fine. Well, it says we're good for the pre-check, so it shouldn't take too long to get through security. Your Uber pulls into Jacksonville International Airport on time. You check your bags and scan your boarding passes. Is there anything you'd like to do before you go through security? I'm gonna go hit Starbucks. Don't go far. Let's meet back here in five. I'm gonna grab a sandwich at the Great American Bagel and check the status of our flight. Lance? I'm gonna go to the Travel Mart and grab a magazine and some snacks for the plane. You grab a candy bar, a pack of gum, and a Pro Wrestling Illustrated. That'll be thirty-eight seventy-four. Forty 40 bucks for a magazine and some gum? Welcome to the airport. <sighs> I guess I'll head back to the security checkpoint. Waylon, with your bagel sandwich in hand, you stand in front of the screen for arrivals and departures. Give me an investigation check. 16. You find your flight on the board. It looks like it's been delayed. Awesome. The three of you meet back up at security. Well, our flight's delayed. Okay, that's fine. We have a two hour layover in Atlanta, so we have time. No reason to panic. Do you guys know how expensive everything here is? Yeah. It's the airport. As the three of you pass through the body scanner, give me survival checks. 12. 19. Four. Okay, Lance, you and Sarah get through without a hitch. Waylon, when you step into the body scanner, the alarm sounds. <sighs> Seriously? Excuse me, sir. If you could go ahead and just step right over here, please. Do I know you? I don't think so, sir. Now, if you could go ahead and just um, uh, stand still and place your arm straight out like a scarecrow. Beep, 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 a3. Hey, can you watch my bag while I go to the bathroom? I don't know, dude. Like, I don't think I'm supposed to do that. Right? Like, that's a rule at the airport. Well, technically the rule is that you're not supposed to leave your bag unattended. See? If it's with you, it's attended. Why me? Why not her? Just watch my bag. I don't... I don't know if I'm ready for this level of responsibility. What if something happens to... I'm gonna go talk to the ticket agent. About what? Anything. I just need to get away from whatever this conversation is. You could just take it with you. Oh yeah, great idea, Lance. I'll just take my backpack into the airport bathroom with me. Then when we get to Hawaii, I can just throw it straight into a volcano. Okay, okay, I'll watch your bag, but I still think it's a bad idea. Preach. I am going to sit down, pop in my earbuds, and read my magazine until it's time to board. Sarah, you approach the ticket agent. Excuse me, is this the gate to flight 1337 to Atlanta? That is correct. Um, unfortunately, it looks like there was an issue with one of the engines, uh, engine two, but uh, they're checking it out right now. Any idea on a timeline? Sorry, ma'am, but you're gonna have to be a little patient. Don't you worry, we'll get you in the skies before you know it. Are you? Have I seen you somewhere before? I don't think so. Unless I've seen you in one of my knitting classes. Do you knit? I do not. Oh, you should really give it a try. It's very therapeutic. This guy seems like he's hiding something. Give me an insight check. 17. You can't seem to shake the feeling that there's something weird about this guy. I'll go sit down next to Lance. Hey, you see that guy? Huh? The ticket agent. Doesn't he look familiar? 
I don't know. Does he? Give me a perception check. Eight. You don't recognize him. Never seen him. Waylon, you're returning from the bathroom. Give me a perception check. Eighteen. Your bag is gone. What? Dude, where is my bag? What? My bag is gone. Whoa. That sucks. You were supposed to be watching it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He should have taken it with him. Whatever. Do you recognize the ticket agent? <sighs> do I? You do. In fact, while it seems unlikely that it would be the same person, the ticket agent does look strikingly similar to the TSA agent from before. I'm going to approach him. I'll go with you. I forgot to ask about my miles. Oh, howdy, folks. What can old Jessup do for you? Jessup? That's me. How can I help? My bag is missing. Oh, dear. That's no good. Did you leave it unattended? I might as well have. Well, if you just fill out this form here, I'll get it forwarded over to the TSA and they can look into it for you. Yeah, speaking of TSA, do you have a brother or something that works here? <laughs> what? No, not me. I don't have any brothers. I'm an orphan. And uh, I work for Delta Airlines. <laughs> I don't buy it. How do we know you're telling the truth? Well, I suppose you'll have to take old Jessup's word for it. Won't you? Wardlow is awesome. The other night, he just power bombed the guy like five times, like power bomb, power bomb, power bomb, power bomb, power bomb, and then a power bomb. What? Um, chaos ensues. People are screaming. Security swarms the gate. What happened? You can't say bomb in an airport, you lunatic. Oh, jeez. Uh. Is that bad? Oh, yeah. The three of you have been taken to a small interrogation room. Oh, God. Are we going to jail? I am not going anywhere except Maui. What do I have to do to get out of here? Well, the FBI should be here shortly. They'll ask you a few questions, and if they feel like charges are necessary, they'll take it from there. What is your deal? Do you want to go to a crowded theater and yell fire next? I was stressed out, okay? Because Whalen forced me to watch his backpack. How can I force you to watch it if you didn't watch it? All right. Which one of you said it? Are you kidding me? I did, sir. Th but this is all a huge misunderstanding. Are you a pro wrestling fan? Never heard of it. Which one of you is Whalen Brandelberger? That's me. Hey, is your name Jessup by any chance? Jessup. Never heard of her. We found your bag, though. <gasps> really? Anyway, we checked it out, and we don't really have a reason to hold you, so we'll go ahead and cut you loose. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, sir. And you said you had a bad feeling about this guy. That was Jessup. In the future, I would advise against leaving your bags unattended. And saying bomb. <laughs> don't you worry. That'll never happen again. Can we finally get on the plane? Normally you would be able to do that, yes. But unfortunately, all of the flights have been canceled due to inclement weather. I mean, that actually went about how I thought it would. Yeah, that was a nightmare. Maybe we should just go somewhere else. No way. We argued about this for like four hours. We're going to Hawaii. Right? After a tumultuous dash across LAX, the three of you have boarded your connecting flight. Does anyone need help finding their seat? 20B. 20B. Is that in the middle of the plane? Yeah. Why? I'm in... 3A? 37C? That's in first class. And that's a window seat. I'm supposed to be in first class. I must have gotten an upgrade. Is that next to an emergency exit? I don't want to be next to an emergency exit. I, I can't handle that pressure. There's an elderly man sitting next to you. Maybe he'll switch seats. I'll just hit the call button and ask one of the flight attendants, I guess. Something got screwed up in the booking. You're in my seat. I'm supposed to be in 3A. Well, I'm sorry, Sarah, but it says right here, Lance Meltzer, 3A. What seems to be the problem here, folks? She's trying to take my seat. She's supposed to be in 37C. Look, I'm a medallion member. Oh my god, it's you. May I see your ticket, ma'am? It's Jessup. Who? I'm very sorry if you feel there was an error, but um, unfortunately our first class is at capacity, so you're going to have to sit in your assigned seat. But 37C isn't... She's gone. In fact, she's already approached Waylon and turned off his call button. Okay, so, like, I'm not really comfortable sitting next to an emergency exit. Oh, shucks. I'm sorry to hear that, sir, but we are at capacity. Perhaps you could ask if somebody would like to switch with you. Fine. It's better than being at the back of the plane. Yes! <laughs> Waylon and Sarah have switched seats. After the cabin has calmed down and everyone stored their bags away, a voice comes over the intercom. Good afternoon. 
folks. My name is Dizzy Jefferson. I'll be your captain today. In just a few minutes, we'll be taxiing out and on our way to the beautiful island of Hawaii. Roll initiative. 19. 15. 6. Lance, as the plane begins moving onto the runway, the beautiful woman sitting next to you says, So are you going to Hawaii for business or pleasure? Huh? Oh, uh, me and my friends are taking a vacation. She smiles and looks around. Oh. Are they here? Actually, they are in coach. Yeah. I'm the only one that could afford first class. You're gonna regret this. Give me a charisma check. Seventeen. She smiles and asks what you do for a living. Uh, I am into cryptocurrency. Yeah, uh, NSPs and all that, like, digital cloud stuff. It's, it's really pretty boring. NSPs? Give me a bluff check. Twenty-two. The woman either doesn't know that you made a mistake or she doesn't care. She tells you that she's a model and pulls her phone out to show you pics. Comfort plus, indeed. Sarah, before you take your turn, give me a deck save. Sixteen. The elderly man next to you is already sleeping. You're able to move your arm in time to avoid the drool falling out of his mouth. Gross. I want to see if I can find the nearest baby. Thirteen to perception. You do see a baby, about ten rows up, but it's sleeping. I'm going to go wake it up. Excuse me, ma'am, but as you can see, the captain has asked all passengers to observe the seatbelt sign. You're not fooling anyone, you know. I beg your pardon? I know who you are. Jessup. Jessup? (laughs) No, ma'am, I I don't even know who that is. I don't have any brothers. Yeah. Who said anything about brothers? The flight attendant disappears down the aisle. Waylon, you are currently seated between two very large Samoan men who are both sleeping and snoring. Seriously? Give me a con save. Nine. The men on either side of you are of such great size that you are restrained. If you want to get up, at least one of them will have to move. Fantastic. Lance, after going through the pictures, you realize that you recognize a couple of them. She's a pretty high-profile model. My name's Lance. And you are... She introduces herself as Lita. Lita? Like the wrestler? When you say this, her smile fades to a look of concern. What? Lita! Like like Team Extreme? Like she used to wrestle with the Hardy Boys. Uh, do, do you even watch wrestling? Give me another charisma check. This time with disadvantage. Fourteen and a uh, two. Lita says nothing. She presses the attendant call button and begins avoiding eye contact with you. What did I say? By this point, the plane is in the air and the captain has turned off the fastened seatbelt sign. Okie dokie, folks. You go ahead and feel free to move about the cabin now. We should be touching down in a little under six hours. Sarah, it's your turn. I'm going to go wake up the baby. I'm curious to see how. I'm just going to act like I know the mother. Hi, Stacy. How are you? Give me an intimidation check. 16. When you grab the woman's shoulder to get her attention, the baby does in fact stir. It begins screaming. If I suffer, everyone suffers. Really? It's not enough I'm stuck between Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Rikishi. Now I gotta listen to a baby scream? Nice wrestling reference. Okay, Sarah and Lance take 15 sonic damage. Worth it. Waylon, you'll take half that because you're at the back of the plane. Thank God for small miracles. The crying baby has roused the Samoan men. You can get up now if you want. I will. I'm gonna go get my seat back from Sarah. Oh, I can save you some time. That's not happening. You start walking towards the front of the plane. Lance, the flight attendant has approached your seat. Oh, cool. Are we ordering drinks? What seems to be the problem here? Problem? There's no problem here. Lita explains to the flight attendant that you've been harassing her, and she wants you to be moved. I I wasn't harassing her. You're going to make me move my seat because I mentioned pro wrestling? Her actual name is Lita. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to swap seats with one of your companions. Please follow me. The... This is insane. Sarah, as you head back to your seat, you notice that Waylon is heading for it as well. Give me opposed athletics checks. Eleven. Eleven. You both reach the seat at the exact same time. And as you do, Lance approaches with the flight attendant. What are you doing here? I got kicked out of first class for talking about wrestling. You gotta stop talking about wrestling, man. All right, sir, which one of these passengers will you be switching seats with? Lance, before you announce your choice, everyone give me dexterity saves. Ten. Twenty. Eighteen. The plane begins shaking violently as the captain attempts to deal with the turbulence. Waylon, take ten damage as you fall to the floor. Don't worry, folks. Just 
a couple of sc oh, uh, sky bumps. Uh, I'll get us through this here in a jiffy. Does that voice sound familiar? It's Jessup. The plane bucks wildly as it drops into a nosedive. You are now plummeting toward Earth at approximately 515 miles per hour. We're gonna die. Oh jeez. Oh crap. Oh jeez. Oh crap. Oh jeez. Hey, do I know you from somewhere? Yes. Okay. Yes. I am Jessup. I'm the flight attendant, the captain, the uh, TSA guy, and the uh, FBI guy. Why are you following us? Who sent you? As you say this, the plane adjusts and levels out. Looks like the captain was able to get you out of the nosedive. Oh, there. Sorry about that, folks. That got a little hairy for a second there. But uh, everything looks good now. We are back on track. The rest of your trip is pretty uneventful. That was the last announcement from the captain, and you don't see Jessup for the rest of the flight. I'm sitting in first class. Hey, that's fine with me. I bet the Samoan dudes are wrestling fans anyway. They are, actually. So we went through all of that, and we still don't know what's up with this Jessup character. Aloha, and welcome to the Big Island. You can't check into your hotel for a few hours, so you've got some time to kill. I guess. Why don't we see if we, uh... We can get laid. Are you sure you wouldn't rather go pick some more low-hanging fruit? Oh, can we stop by a Long's drugstore? I've got some uh, stuff I need to pick up. Give me perception checks. 17. Eight. 12. Okay, Waylon and Sarah, you don't see this, but Lance, as you scan the terminal entrance, you notice a man holding a sign that says, Lance, Sarah, Waylon. Hey, Sarah. Did you hire a limo to pick us up? No, I was just going to rent a car. So this guy who I think it is? You can't tell who it is. He's wearing a hat, dark sunglasses, and a mask. How do we want to handle this? He doesn't know we know it's him. Who? Unless he does know that we know. And we just don't know it. What if he knows that we know that he knows that we know? What are you talking about? I say we play dumb. Make him make the first move. Agreed. We'll walk over to the total stranger and get in his car. The man loads your bags into the limousine and hops up into the driver's seat. Hey, sir, is it possible that we stop by a Long's Drugs on the way to the hotel? The driver nods and rolls up the partition. You're going to be in traffic for a while. What is the deal with this drugstore? Oh, yeah. The guys from the plane, Afa and Sika, they told me a list of survival stuff to help me while we're here. You do realize we're staying at a luxury hotel. Everyone give me dexterity saves. 14. 19. 5. Okay, Lance, you and Waylon take 12 bludgeoning damage as the roof of the limo caves in and knocks you out of your seats. Guys, what was that? Am I able to get out of the car? One of the doors is still able to open, yes. As you step outside, give me another dexterity save, this time with disadvantage. 18 and 20. When you step onto the highway, you hear a low whistling sound that seems to be increasing in volume and pitch. No way. Instinctively, you take a step backwards as a lava rock lands where you were standing. A lava rock? There are active volcanoes on this island? The island of Hawaii is a volcano. And yes, Mauna Loa is erupting. Is that even possible? Historically speaking, it's overdue. Why did we even come to this island? We should have gone to the Disney spa in Oahu. You think I have Disney money? How do you think I ended up in 37C? Wait, is there a radio in the limo? There is indeed. When you turn it on, a representative from the Hawaii Volcano Observatory is explaining that it was a phreatic eruption. Well, what does that mean? It means no liquid magma, just steam and rocks. Can we make it to the shelter? When you look out the window, you see that you're about 100 yards away from Long's Drugs. Well, how about that? Must be fate. Give me athletics checks to get there safely. 15. 15. 13. Waylon, you do get hit by a small rock, but it doesn't do much. Take three damage. Is the rock still hot? Well, some people might argue that all of his movies are the same, but I personally... Oh, you meant the actual rock. No. Why? I'm going to take it with me. Did I see him do that? Nope. You have made it inside the drugstore, though. There's an elderly native woman behind the counter. Wait a minute. We left Jessup in the car. You certainly did. Okay. We need three cartons of Pog... 10 cartons of Spam, a ukulele, and something called Dekine. Dekine? I will handle this. Uh, mahalo, Auntie. How's it? Give me a charisma check with advantage. I'm going to go back for him. 10. You can't go back out there. It's literally raining lava. And... It was a phreatic eruption. 22. The woman can tell that you're a tourist, but she appreciates the effort. 
She smiles and asks how she can help. Um, I'm just looking for some of the things on this list. Have you heard of Dakine? While Lance collects his things, Sarah, you mentioned that you'd like to run back out into the volcanic storm. Is that correct? I want to see if I can see him first. 15 on a perception. Through the chaos of people running around and dodging debris, you do see the driver. He's running across the highway toward the forest. We got to go after him. Does this drugstore sell umbrellas? They do. Lance, the woman has helped you get all of the items on your list. Hey, do you guys want any slippers? Slippers? We're about to chase this guy across Hawaii and you're buying slippers? No. Like, slippers. You know, like, flip-flops? Let's just get going. We're going to chase after the driver. Well, you've lost him. And to be honest, at this point, you're just lost. It's starting to get dark, so... Maybe consider setting up camp? I guess this is what we get for chasing a random stranger. Yeah, it probably wasn't even Jessup. Oh, it was Jessup. Well, it's a good thing we have supplies. Waylon, you still have that rock? Yes. Give me a con save. Ten. Um, what rock? Picked up one of the lava rocks that hit me. You what? Dude, you're not supposed to take one of the lava rocks that can anger the goddess Pele. The ground beneath you rumbles, and the surrounding trees begin to sway and shake as a giant fire elemental explodes out of the forest floor. Roll initiative. Seven. Nine. Twelve. Okay, the fire elemental goes first. He's going to attack Sarah, and he'll hit. You're on fire. Yay. Take 12 fire damage and it's Lance's turn. Why would you take a lava rock? Well, why wouldn't you tell me to not take the lava rock? Well, you know, I would have told you that if I would have realized. I'm going to throw my pog at the fire elemental. Give me a ranged attack. 18. Congratulations. The fire elemental takes one cold damage. You're up. How can we kill it? Haven't you seen Moana? Oh, uh, yeah. How far away is the elemental? About 30 feet. Cool. As a full round action, I'm going to go put the rock back in this chest. That's going to be one heck of a dexterity check if you want to do that. 24. When Waylon places the rock inside the elemental, it explodes. And when it does, Sarah, you are now left alone in the forest. What? That's right. After the explosion, Lance and Waylon are nowhere to be found. Okay. This is not that big of a deal. Those two just slow you down anyways. I guess I'll just walk back to the highway. It's gotten rather dark, and the forest sounds are pretty frightening, so you're going to need to make fear saves if you want to continue alone. Actually, I have a feat called Nerves of Steel. If I whistle while I walk, I can forego any fear saves. So you'd like to whistle at night. Yeah? What's the big deal? The three of you have rendezvoused in the lobby of the Black Lily. It's after midnight, so you're welcome to check in. What happened to you two? I don't know. I don't remember. We were in the woods, and then the fire elemental exploded, and then we were kind of transported here, I guess? Something weird is going on for sure, and this Jessup guy is definitely behind it. Wait, well, how, how did you get here? Oh, I met these guys called the Ali. I told them where we were staying, and they sent me here. What? Yeah, it was kind of cool, actually. They played drums and chant and stuff. There are stories of the Night Marchers burning people to ash with their laser eyes. Sarah made friends with them. They invited me to the battle and said I could summon them whenever I want. You know you did this. Me? You think I wanted this? Blame the dice. If it was up to me, she'd be a corpse in the woods. Look, we're obviously coming up with more questions than we are answers, so let's just get some sleep and... We'll talk about it in the morning. After checking in, the three of you retire to your rooms. Lance, you're in 104. You're in 237. Sarah, you're in 1408. 237. 1408. It's the big banana suite. Have fun in your budget rooms. Okay, is room 104 from something? Everyone give me percentile rolls. 73. 51. 30. Lance, you and Sarah sleep straight through. Waylon, you can't be sure if it was a dream or not, but you think you heard someone banging on your door in the middle of the night. That is not good. I'm going to head down to the restaurant and get some breakfast. Me too. I'm actually going to grab a few bananas from my room to take with me. You just have bananas in your room? Yeah, I'm in the big banana suite. There's supposed to be a fresh bunch of oversized bananas every morning. There are no big bananas. Somebody's going to pay for this. Maybe you can ask management about it. 
Lance, when you get downstairs, Waylon is already there. He seems distressed. Hey, man, what's, uh, what's up with you? I don't know, man. I think there's somebody trying to get in my room last night. It wasn't you, was it? No. I was asleep as soon as I hit the pillow. Welp, there are no big bananas in my room. Should there be? Uh, yeah. I paid for the big banana suite. Hey, were you trying to get into my room last night? Why would I try to get in your room? I don't have time for this. I'm going diving. Sarah has left the dining area. So much for solving the mystery. Why would someone be trying to get into my room? Give me perception checks. Fifteen. Ugh. Four. Lance, you don't see this, but Waylon, as you glance around, you notice a man reading a book in the corner. He looks familiar. Waylon! You're not going to believe this. What? You see that guy over there? When you look back, the man is gone. Sarah, you're going scuba diving? Well, I paid for it, so... But I also paid for the big banana suite, so who knows what's real? When you arrive at the dive shop, the owner already has your gear ready for you. Give me an athletics check. 18. You have no trouble getting about 60 feet below the surface. What's your AC? 17. The water around you moves as a spear nearly hits you in the back. A spear? Can I... See where it came from? After a brief scan of your surroundings, you notice the shadowy figure of a man about 25 feet above you. He's reloading. Roll initiative. 23. You're up first. I'm going to swim up to him and punch him in the throat with my push dagger. Hold on. Isn't your movement halved when you're swimming? Normally, yes, but I took Agile Swimmer, which gives me a swim speed. And also, I rolled a nat 20. Roll your damage. 12 damage to his carotid. Yeah, I got it. He's not dead yet. He's going to try and stab you with a spear gun. And he misses. Great. I'm going to cut his air. 19. You've cut his air supply. He is now incapacitated. Someone is trying to kill me. Who would want to kill me? I could think of a few thousand NPCs. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I got to get off this island, so I guess I'm going to go back to the hotel and book a flight. So you're just going to leave a dead body in the ocean? You're right. I'll sink him. In the meantime, what are you two doing? Spa day? I'll take a rain check. I'm going to go grab a drink and check out the pool. Lance, when you get to the spa, the woman tells you that there'll be a short wait since you're a walk-in. Oh, yeah, no problem. I'll be here. Waylon, there's actually a bar in the pool if you'd like to save some time. Perfect. I'll swim on over and order a pineapple Mai Tai. The bartender begins making your drink and thanks you for your patronage. He asks if you're enjoying your stay at the Black Lily. It's getting better. Yesterday was... A little weird. Last night, I think somebody was trying to break into my room. When you say this, the man's smile drops. He quietly finishes making your drink and hurries off to help other customers. <laughs> Rude. You hear a woman's voice ask what your drink is, and when you turn around, you see that two beautiful women in bikinis are standing in front of you. Pineapple Mai Tai. Could I buy you ladies around? They both laugh. One of them holds up a ring and says, I'm married. But she's available. Excuse me, bartender. I'll take another pineapple mic. Waylon! Laser Falcon? Get out of the pool! Get out of the pool? Laser Falcon begins running toward the pool at full speed. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to get out of the pool. Give me an athletics check. Oh, 17. You may get out of the pool in time. Laser Falcon throws the toaster into the pool between the two women, and when he does, they are electrocuted. Oh, my God. Why would you kill them? Those women were assassins. They were gonna kill you. Oh. Wait, wait a minute. I thought you were dead. You aren't safe here. This entire resort is full of people who want to kill you. Lance, I've gotta go to the spa. What about me? You're not worried about me? Aren't you currently burying the body of the guy you just killed? That's not the point. Mr. Meltzer, the masseuse is ready for you now. Oh, cool. If you could focus on my shoulders, I'm going to try to find a disc golf course on the island tomorrow. The masseuse leads you into a small room filled with candles and peaceful music. She closes the door behind her and locks it. Um, do you mind if we leave the door unlocked? Because Before you can finish your thought, the woman lunges toward you and grabs your neck. Give me an opposed grapple check with disadvantage. Oh, God. Um, 13 and 11. She's grabbed you by the throat and started choking you. You are now grappled. Is this how it ends? Take 15 damage and roll initiative. 14. She goes first. And that's a crit. Take 32 more damage and give me another grapple check. 21. You are out of the grapple. It's your turn. I don't know what to... I don't have any... Wait. The ukulele. How very El Kabong of you. Roll your attack. 
20 total. That hits. Roll your damage. Six. She attempts to grapple you again. Give me an opposed roll. A nat one. She grapples you again and chokes you again for 28 more damage. I'm gonna die. Not today, Lance. Laser Falcon. Laser Falcon tases the woman and she collapses to the ground. You're alive. Barely, but you're alive. Thanks, Laser Falcon. Yo, that massage lady just tried to kill me. I know. Apparently there's assassins all over the resort. He's right. We gotta find Sarah and get you three off this island. Already on top of it. I got us all tickets for the next cruise ship out of here. It leaves in an hour. Assuming we can survive for that long. I can keep you safe until then. Plus, I can bring you up to speed on what's going on. Gee, that would be helpful. So, it all started when... Are you kidding me? Where did he go? You're not sure, but it's probably advisable to keep your heads on a swivel. You are assassin targets, after all. By the way, um... Where is this cruise taking us? Your luggage has been stored and the ship is departing port. What would you like to do? I'm gonna drink fruity drinks with little umbrellas in them until I can't see. Same. We are lucky to be alive right now. Yeah, I think a nice boring cruise makes for a much needed change of pace. The ship cruises onward as the three of you soak up the sun and enjoy your drinks. By the way, what classes are your characters? I didn't make one. Ser seriously? I mean, I know we're just on a cruise, but I still made a full character sheet. Not me. I'm just Sarah. Level one human. No class. I'm sure that decision won't come back to haunt you. Everyone give me constitution saves. 18. 16. Two. Sarah, you're about five daiquiris in, so you're pretty drunk. Until you sober up, you'll have disadvantage on any checks involving balance, perception, or charisma. Well, that's at the slots. They got slots in this dinghy, don't they? They do. The slot machines are on deck three. I don't know about you bozos, but I'm going to get rich or die flying. I'm going to steal a lot of her money so she doesn't lose it all. Give me a sleight of hand check. 23. Sarah, roll perception with disadvantage. Six. You successfully remove most of the money from her purse. Oh, sweet. Uh, I'll leave her like mm, 10 bucks. Sarah drunkenly wanders off to the casino. What are you two going to do? I think I'll just get some food, maybe check out a show. I heard Carrot Top's performing later, and I haven't heckled anyone in a while, so... I think I'll join you. The two of you make your way to the dining room. It's pretty packed with people, but you manage to find an open table. The food's included, right? Yep, it's included in the ticket price. A waiter approaches your table. Good evening, gentlemen. May I get you drinks to start? A uh, gin and tonic, if you would. I'll just have a Pepsi, thank you. Very good, sir. The waiter disappears. Sarah, how we doing over there? I forgot where I was. And what I was doing. I did find more daiquiris. You were going to go to the casino to play slots? <gasps> what did you call me? Slot machines. You were going to gamble in the casino on deck three? Oh, yeah. I also start buzzing over that way, I guess. <laughs> Buzz. <laughs> Buzz. Hey, are you sure you don't want to have some water? Maybe some food? Like four loaves of bread? No, gaming buster. You mean metagaming, right? <laughs> I'm in a different place than you. I can't hear your words. Let's put this disaster on pause. The waiter has returned with your drinks. Gin and tonic. Thank you. And one. Before he can finish what he's saying, the ship lurches forward. The Pepsi flies through the air and splashes all over you. Whoa. What happened? Oh, God. Are we sinking? You all hear a voice come over the intercom system. Whoa. Sorry about that, folks. Looks like we're about to hit a major storm formation here. Usually we could see these things coming, but uh, this one came out of nowhere. <sighs> what happens now? Well, the captain has advised all passengers to return to their rooms until the storm passes. Give me con saves. 17. Five. Waylon, the ship's movement is making you queasy and sick, but you do manage to make it back to your shared room. Sarah? Hit me. Are we playing blackjack? I thought you were going to the casino to play slots. Yep. Playing the slot machines and lower deck. Jackpot, I got a three. The lower deck isn't the casino. It's the engine room. And what you think is a lever on a slot machine is in fact the emergency cutoff switch. The engines have stopped. Did I win? What? No. You just cut the power to a ship in the middle of a violent storm. <gasps> Bedtime. You're just going to sleep in the engine room? <laughs> no. I'm going to the top deck 
to sleep under the stars. You can take the girl out of Florida. Okay, back to you two. Waylon, give me a con save. Seven. You're gonna be in the bathroom most of the night. I guess I'll just sleep in here then. Lance, anything else you'd like to do? Ugh, I guess I'll just go to sleep too. The three of you pass out. Lance in bed, Waylon on the bathroom floor, and Sarah in a lounge chair on the top deck in a storm. Mm, just like home. The storm rumbles through the night, but clears up by morning. Lance, you are woken up by the sound of someone knocking on your cabin door. <sighs> yeah, I'll answer it. Hey, good morning, sir. We're just doing a quick passenger count. How many people are in your room? Um... Waylon is still on the bathroom floor. Sarah is nowhere to be found. Uh, two. At the moment. Okay, well, it says here that there should be three passengers in the room. Oh, yeah, that's our friend Sarah. She went to the casino last night and must not have come back. Interesting. Um, please stay in your room until further notice. Oh, yeah, sure, no problem. The man leaves. Give me a perception check. 21. You hear the faint screaming of a woman. It sounds like it's coming from a few rooms down. I'm gonna press my ear up against the wall so I can hear better. You hear a woman crying. She says, he's dead. Someone stabbed him. Hey, Waylon, you alive? Oh, barely. What's up? Someone got stabbed. We gotta get off the boat. You know, we're supposed to be on vacation. Sarah is missing and someone is dead. Do you get the picture? <sighs> this is what happens when a murder hobo sets up camp in your party. Dude. I got a 16 to search for Sarah. It takes you almost two hours, but you find her sleeping on a unicorn float in a pool. Hey, Sarah. Wake up. Huh? Oh, hey. You notice a red stain on the front of her shirt. Sarah? What's on your shirt? Hmm? Oh, I don't know. It's probably a daiquiri or something. Give me perception checks. 21. 12? Waylon, you see a knife at the bottom of the pool. Hey, Sarah. What, um, what'd you do last night? I have no idea. A large crowd of people makes its way over to the pool. It's led by a man who introduces himself as the security director. Ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask that you come with me. What? Why? What's going on? Did you kill someone last night? What? Of course not. I don't think. The security director advises that you swim over and turn yourself in peacefully. Book him, Dano. Whatever. Arrest me. Fine. And that joke is two sessions late, by the way. Sir, Sarah would never kill anyone. Without a good reason. Mm, without a reason. She only kills bad people. Just stop talking. <sighs> we'll get you out of this. She'll be placed in the cruise's holding cell until we reach our destination. I've got an idea. I'm going to go back to my room and get my laptop. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just hacking into the camera security system to see if I can find any footage of the murder. Give me a computer use check. 23. It takes a bit of digging, but you do manage to find some footage of Sarah at around 1.45 a.m. It looks like she's standing in front of a cabin door with her hand on the doorknob. I'm in. It got an 18 to enhance the camera footage and investigate it. You examine the image closely, and as you do, you notice something suspicious about Sarah's arm. Her arm? Well, for one thing, it's covered in dark hair, so this isn't Sarah's arm, it's the arm of a man. And the man is also wearing gloves. So I just have to sit in a cell until we get to Alaska? Alaska? Welcome to the last frontier. After disembarking from your cruise liner, you find yourselves a few miles south of a small town called Bear Creek, which is where they'll be transporting Sarah. Bear Creek? Gee, I'm sure I'll find a great public defender there. Don't worry. We will get you out of there as soon as we can. I guess we'll just rent a car. Still got that money you took from Sarah? I think so. Do I? Give me a search check. Nine? Nope. It was either stolen or lost. It's also negative 25 degrees, so give me con saves. Eight. Two. You each take seven points of cold damage. Sarah, you're warm enough in the back of the squad car. Ooh, a silver lining. Just a heads up, the longer you stay outside, the higher the DC to avoid the cold damage. All right. What do we do? What's the nearest building? Give me a perception check. 16. Looks like there's a Safeway grocery store across the street. I'll do. As you pass through the parking lot, you notice that all of the parked cars are running. Are there people in them? Nope. Considering the weather, most people around here just leave their vehicles running when they go in the shop. We could. 
gonna just take one. It's not bad enough that you want to break our murderous friend out of jail, but now you want to add Grand Theft Auto? No, I'm just saying, if we are gonna break our murderous friend out of jail, why not add Grand Theft Auto? What are you, a politician? Fine, okay? We will steal a car. I guess I'll just try handles till I find one that's unlocked. That doesn't take long. You find a Buick Encore with the doors unlocked. You know, it's probably really bad karma to steal someone's car in Alaska in January. I'm chaotic neutral, Lance. We're gonna head toward Bear Creek. Speaking of which, Sarah, you've arrived at the Bear Creek Police Department. You're brought to a small interrogation room, and after a few minutes, a detective enters. Look, I'm not gonna talk without my lawyer present, so what is going on? Hello there, ma'am. My name is Detective Taffy. Taffy. That's correct. We do have an attorney on the way for you, but in the meantime, maybe we could go over some basic questions. Is Taffy your first name? Well, I don't really see how that's relevant here, but if you must know, it's Laffy. Laffy Taffy? Yes. I, I know it's kind of like the candy. It's exactly like the candy. Okay. Word for word. Your name is the candy. Is your brother's name Saltwater? All right, Miss Sarah. I'm the one asking the questions here. I told you I'm not talking until my attorney gets here. Which one of you is driving? Mm-mm. This wasn't even my idea. Fine. I'm driving. Give me a drive check with disadvantage. 15 and 12. You managed to keep your car on the road. At least you think so. The ice makes it pretty difficult for you to tell if you're actually on the road. Can you see the road? 13 to perception. You can't really tell. You're also starting to lose daylight. What? It's like 5 p.m. Yeah, it's Alaska. Anyway, there's nothing directly in front of you at the moment, if that helps. It does not. Well, at least we're only a few miles from town. Sarah, your attorney has arrived. He's advised you that you answer all of the detective's questions as honestly as possible. He'll stop you if he thinks it's one you shouldn't answer. <sighs> okay, let's do it. Okay, why don't we start with where you were between the hours of 1 and 2 this morning? I don't know. I was drunk. Your attorney whispers to not go into any further detail. I couldn't go into detail if I wanted to. I... Don't remember. Your attorney winks at you. Does he think I killed this guy? Give me an insight check. 19. He thinks you're guilty. He's fired. Forget it. I will be representing myself. That is highly inadvisable. I don't care. Let's just get it over with. Bring it on, Taffy. Waylon, give me a dexterity save with disadvantage. Okay, why is like every other role with disadvantage? Oh, in Alaska, any and all checks surrounding survival are made with disadvantage. 16. In six. Something large and heavy has struck your car and caused it to careen into a snow embankment. Each of you take three bludgeoning damage. Dude, what the heck was that? I don't know. Did I see what I hit? Oh, you didn't hit anything. Something hit you. And it just hit the car again. Can I see what it is through the window? Yep. It's a dire moose. A dire moose? Like, aren't all mooses dire moose is? Mooses? Meese? Normal moose can be up to seven feet at the shoulder. So if it's dire, it's probably 11 feet tall. We need to lead it away from here, or else it will destroy the car. He's right about that. It just did 10 more damage to the car. Whalen, you're not sincerely suggesting that we lead the dire moose away from the car, right? It will murder us. Not if we don't let it. It says here, the moose have bad peripheral vision. Like gators. Exactly. It also looks like they have a huge mosquito problem here in the summer. Huh. I guess Alaska is just like Florida man in a winter coat. Sarah, after your attorney leaves, Detective Taffy asks you outright if you killed the man on the ship. No. And if I did kill him, I wouldn't be stupid enough to fall asleep on top of the murder weapon in a bloody shirt. Yeah, about that. I did just get word from the lab that the stain was in fact strawberry daiquiri mix, so. There you go, my story checks out. So when can I get out of here? Oh, I'm afraid it's not that simple, miss. See, we're gonna need to hold you here overnight just to- Overnight? I have to get home. I'm from Florida. Someone is trying to frame me. And could you think of anybody that might be out to get you? If you two are going to make a run for it, I'm definitely going to need athletics checks. Let's go different directions. 17. Oh, great. So only one of us will die. 15. When you exit the vehicle, the dire moose decides to chase Waylon. It can't run serpentine! Zigzag! Get behind the tree! I'm not going to run. Um, roll initiative, I guess? 22. 
Okay, you go first, but this is probably going to be your last turn. I'm going to make a handle animal check. 28. Okay, Steve Irwin. 28? I totally forgot I put a bunch of points into handle animal. Um, never really used it. I wanted to try something new on this build. The dire moose is now your companion. Let's go get Sarah. You take the car. I'm going to ride my new friend into town. Waylon mounts his dire moose and rides off into the sunset. Aw. Okay. I'll just take the car. When you turn back to the car, you see that it is now surrounded by three normal-sized moose. There are more mooses? Moose. Mice? Not mice. Moose. Any ideas on who would want to frame you for murder? I know who it is. Oh, fantastic. If you could just tell us who that person is, we can look into them as a suspect. The person who framed me for murder is the same person who's trying to kill all of us. Sarah, before you can finish your thought, the opposite wall of the interrogation room crashes in and the detective is buried in rubble. Uh, what? Standing before you is Waylon. He's seated atop an 11 foot tall moose. What are you doing? You just killed Detective Taffy. Detective Taffy? Like Laffy Taffy? I know who's trying to kill us and who set me up. If Waylon took the moose, how did you get here? He took the car. Actually, I didn't. The car got overran by those things. I ran into a couple. A couple of moose? No. <laughs> People. A really nice couple named Calvin and Brittany. They brought me here and they told me about a train that we can get on to get out of here. And you don't think it's weird that perfect strangers just saved you from the moose at the last minute? No, I really don't. I guess I just have a little bit more faith in people than you. I have faith in Knuckle. That's his name. You. When does the train leave? The three of you are on board the Finbar Dreamliner. It is 1,001 cars long, and you are in the last car. <sighs> How long until we're out of Alaska? Uh, give or take 75 hours. Why are we on this train again? You're a fugitive wanted for murder. We need to keep a low profile. Nothing lower profile than a train in Alaska. The train slowly rolls forward and sounds its horn as it leaves the station. So what's the car we're in look like? You're huddled in pretty tightly with what seem like a bunch of sick and dirty people. I'm gonna ask the closest person when the dining cart opens. An older man behind you laughs until he coughs, and after he catches his breath, he says, Dining cart? <laughs> You'll be lucky if we get crumbs to eat. So what, we just don't eat? All of the food on the train is saved for the rich. That's ridiculous. Why don't you do something about it? The man's smile fades. Well, what would you have us do? There's armed guards at every section. Hey, Sarah, before you do what I'm like 90% sure you're about to do, remember we need to keep you out of trouble until we can prove the whole didn't kill someone thing? I'm going to walk over to the nearest guard. Hey, these people need food. The man sneers and turns his nose up at you. If they wanted food, they should have brought it with them. Excuse me, sir. It's probably in your best interest to get the food. It's probably in your best interest to shut up before I... 25 to break his neck. Sarah grabs his head and jerks it sideways. The man falls to the ground dead. Take his gun. We're feeding these people. I'm going to grab the guard's keys and open the door. It swings open. Inside, you see another group of people who's looking back at you. The guard turns at you as well. What are you doing? I'm going to take a shot at him. 19. That hits. Roll damage. 29. The man flies backwards and slams against the door before sliding down into a pile. The rest of the people in the car look shocked. For too long, we have let those at the front of the train eat our food. No longer. Join us, friends, and take your seat at the buffet. Give me a charisma check. 18. Most of the crowd cheers, although some of them are a bit hesitant. Okay. I'm going to walk over, grab the gun, and look back so I can say, Dinner's ready, before I open the door. This is pretty out of character for you. Well, why should we always let her have all the murder hobo fun? And besides, these people suck. They totally have it coming. Looks like I've been a good influence. You should play like this more often. The next door opens, and it's pretty much the same as the last two. I'm going to charge the guard. He points his rifle at you, but forgets to take the safety off. I'll do a running jump kick. 27. Roll damage. 23. The force of your kick caves in part of his skull. I'm going to pass the rifle off to one of the other passengers. You continue your march through the train cars, amassing quite a large army. In fact, some of the guards have even defected to your side. You are now in train car 210. How many people do we have with us? About 320, but most of the children and elderly stayed behind. The door of the next car reads, Class 2 Luggage. Okay, let's see if we can find anything useful. Give me search checks. 
15. 17. 12. You manage to find various medicines, winter coats, shoes, toiletries, and other important items. Perfect. Let's only take armed people with us for the next attack. The others can bring supplies to those who stayed behind. You now have a group of 75 armed individuals. Let's say we keep moving. We've got a long way to go. The next few train cars don't have any guards in them, just families. They look pretty terrified. Hey, we don't want any trouble. We're just looking for food. One of the little boys says, there's food two train cars away. Thank you. We'll head that way. You enter the food car. There are people sitting down to enjoy their meals. Some of them notice you. Everyone just stay calm. We're gonna take a little bit of food and then we'll be on our way. You see a man stand up and sprint for the door. Is he armed? No. What if he warns the guards? Let him. Okay, let's get half of these people to start taking this food back to the others. The rest come with us. You enter the next train car. It's another room full of tables. Make sure everyone stays here to stand guard. We'll go forward alone. Lance, one of the passengers approaches you, a little girl. She hands you her stuffed teddy bear and says thank you. Aw, what's this for? She says it's just a thank you, but there's also a surprise inside. You'll know when to use it. Thank you. Stay safe. You burn through another few hundred cars, killing only those who deserve it. You finally reach a heavily fortified door with a behemoth of a man standing guard in front of it. We got two options here. We can do this the easy way, or we can do this the dead way. He laughs, throws his gun to the side, and raises his fists. I choose death. Roll initiative. 13. 15. 22. Lance, you're up first. Don't worry. I have no intention of trying to fist fight Brock Lesnar. I'm going to shoot him. 18. That hits. 20 damage. Hey, the bullet hits him in the side. He winces, but shakes it off pretty quickly and charges you, attacking you with a flying punch. And he hits... Take 24 damage to the face. Ouch. Sarah. I'm going to punch him in the throat. 21. That's also a hit. 14 damage. He grasps at his throat. He's a little out of breath, but he's still standing. Waylon. I'm going to shoot him. 20. Good for you. 56 damage. The bullet hits him in the neck and he coughs up a little bit of blood. He looks a lot more shaky now, but he's still standing. Lance? Okay, I'm gonna ready an action to pull open the side door and mock him so he charges at me. Okay, how do you make fun of him? Hey Brock, why do you have John Leguizamo from Spawn on your back? He is beyond rage. And as you hoped, he charges you. I yank open the door and jump over five feet to the side. His momentum carries him through the doorway and off of the train. Nice work. Let's go. You enter the next car, which is empty, save for a large steel box in the middle. You hear a tapping coming from inside. I'm gonna open it. You do. And out steps. This cannot be possible. Oh, hey there, guys. How you doing? Jessup. Laser Falcon. Who? Yeah, the name's uh, Ralph Hancock. The uh, other guys you're talking about are just identities I use. Why are you locked in a box? It's a long story, but basically I was contracted to spy on you and your party. Oh, sneaky-like. Spy on the party? Who would want you to spy on us? Oh no, I could never say his name. So this explains why we keep seeing him so much. He is spying on us. Yeah, but who would want to spy on us? Waylon, what's the name of the train again? The Finbar Dreamline. Oh my god, it's Barry. What? It's obviously Barry. It's Barry, isn't it? Oh, yeah, bingo, that's it. He wanted me to sabotage the game, so it would make you want to play with him again. Well, that backfired. These sessions have been pretty awesome. Anywho, he's on the train, if you'd like me to take you to him. If you would. Okie doke, then just follow me. I know a shortcut to the front of the train. Well, guys, it looks like Barry's plot is about to be... derailed. Hold on a second. If you were helping him spy on us, why would he lock your character up? I told him I couldn't do it anymore. You see, I was starting to have fun with you guys, and I just didn't want to ruin the game. Take us to him. He walks over to the side door that's open and climbs up. You follow him across the top of the train until he stops at a hatch near the front. Is this it? Yep, he's right down there. Yeah, I'm gonna open it. So you do. You all jump through the now open hatch down into complete and utter darkness, which is where we'll end for this week. Dude! What was the point of all that? The hatch above you slams shut, and the four of you are standing in complete darkness, with the only light coming from a large blue button on a control panel. Barry? You don't see anyone out. 
nuts. Why'd you lie, Ralph? Oh, I didn't lie. Last I knew he was driving the train, I swear. I guess I'll hit the button. When you do, the wall to your left lights up with an LED screen, which is soon filled with a familiar face. Hey, dummies. It's me, Barry. We already know who you are, Barry. We want to know where you are. My location isn't relevant, but if you manage to survive the next three days, you might find me. Why delay the inevitable? Just come fight us now. I could, but where's the fun in that? Ralph? That you? Oh yeah, hey there, Bear. I thought I locked you up. Oh, yeah, you did, but uh, these fine folks here let me out. Anywho, now I'm gonna kill ya. <laughs> You're gonna have to get off the train first. That button you just pressed, it's jump-started a death machine. Uh, what does that mean? Well, if the train speed goes below 50 miles per hour, it blows up. Oh, how very Howard Payne of you. By the way, there might be a problem with the bridge above Nightmare Gulch. Good luck. God, I hate Barry. The screen blips out and you are left hurtling towards a certain death. What do you want to do? Not die. I got a 17 to search. Can I find the explosive? You don't see anything that resembles a bomb. You know, it's probably outside. Is there another door? The door leading to the other train cars is also locked. Okay, we can figure this out. Hey, uh, Waylon, can't you uh, hack into stuff like you did on the cruise ship? Maybe you can open the doors that way. Good thinking, Ralph. It's a 19 for computer use. You're able to access the train's control panel, and you can see that all of the doors on the train are locked. Uh, 29 to override the lock system. The, um, it doesn't work. Why do you seem confused? I had the DC set to 23. Looks like Barry changed my notes. Then change them back. They're in permanent marker. <gasps> the horror. Wait, I have an idea. I'm gonna walk over to the door that leads to the rest of the train. The doors are locked, remember? What's your plan there, fella? You guys remember the little girl who gave me the teddy bear? She said I'd know when it was time to use it. I placed the bear on the ground in front of the door. Nothing happens. Maybe you have to activate it somehow? I don't see any switches or levers on it. I mean, he has a button nose, but that's all. What if it needs magical components or like an incantation? Mind if I take a gander? Sure, go for it. I'm gonna chuck it at the door as hard as I can. Dude. That was a gift. Ralph hurls the bear toward the door, and as it flies, the stuffed figure multiplies in size and morphs into a fully grown grizzly bear. Well, I guess that little girl's name was Annie, and that's Tibbers. The bear turns back at you and looks on for direction. <laughs> the bear nods, growls, and begins pummeling the door. It doesn't take long before he rips it off the hinges. Now we're in business. Let's get out of here. As the four of you exit the train car, give me perception checks. 22. Uh, 17. 26. 19. Okay, you all see a few different things. First of all, the rest of the train is still connected to the engine. Should we maybe disconnect them in case the bomb goes off? Waylon, you and Sarah also see a sign that says Nightmare Gulch, three miles. Okay, at 50 miles an hour, that gives us a little under four minutes. That's not enough time to slow them down. Even if we disconnect them, they'll still go over the bridge. Actually, uh, train cars, they have automatic brake systems just in case they get separated from uh, the engines. You see, some trains use air brake systems, but the uh, older models, some of them used vacuum brakes. Great, you know about trains. Can you disconnect it? Oh, sure can. Now, is it a link pin or semi-automatic coupler? Why would we know that? Oh, settle down there, fella. It was just a question. Let me take a look. Less than three minutes now. Why do you know so much about trains? You a big Rod Stewart fan? Oh, I'm an uh, NPC, so I know lots of stuff, especially when it helps move the plot along. And that's definitely a semi-automatic coupler. Is that a good thing? Well, it makes our lives a little easier. Just gotta close the angle cock and lift the cut lever. I got a two on my knowledge check to see if I know what he's talking about. Appropriate, because you have no idea. He may as well be speaking abyssal. Hey, Ralph? I'm sure it's really easy to do, but could you just do it for us? Oh yeah, sure, no problemo. Two minutes. There's a jolt as the rest of the train is separated from the engine. As Ralph mentioned, the automatic brake system works and the train begins slowing down. <sighs> that was close. Yeah. But what do we do about us? You know, we could have just gotten on the train before we disconnected it. Yeah. Yeah, we could have. Well, you didn't. And as a result, you find yourself still chugging along to a certain death. Great. 
Now what are we gonna do? Even if we defuse the bomb, we're still gonna go into Nightmare Gulch. We could always make a jump for it. Are you insane? We're going 50 miles an hour. Do you know how much fall damage we would take? That's a lot of damage. It's less damage than exploding. That's true. What do you think, Ralph? Actually, I just remembered that Barry has a couple snow saucers stored up here, just in case of an emergency. Snow saucers? You betcha. Maybe we can use those to uh, jump off the train and slide across the snow real delicate-like. Oh, they're like disc sleds. 30 seconds. It's better than dying. Let's go. Cool. Everyone give me a jump check and a tumble check. Four and 13. 15 and 24. Uh, 17 on the jump. 18. Oh, two on the tumble. 10. Okay, Waylon, you almost land on the train track, but your tumble check was good enough to write yourself on your saucer. Oh, yeah. Sarah, you and Lance have no trouble landing on your saucers and sliding to a safe stop on the snow. Oh, we're alive. Where's Ralph? You don't see him anywhere, but you all do hear an explosion. It sounds like it's coming from the bottom of Nightmare Gulch. We gotta stop this son of a- Before you can finish your thought, a thunderous rumble fills the air as the snow on the nearby mountains begins a downward shift. Avalanche. It is an avalanche indeed, for which there is no save. The three of you are buried in a river of snow, and everything goes black. Seriously? Are we dead? You are not dead, but you are all definitely unconscious. Everyone roll percentiles to see who wakes up first. 24. 48. 81. Waylon, you're the first to wake up. You immediately notice that your head is pounding. Can I tell where I am? You aren't sure, but it's cold. A quick glance around makes you think you're in some sort of ice cave. You're also upside down and restrained with rope. Hmm. Do I see anything else? As you scan around the room, you see another man hanging next to you. His eyes are closed and he looks frozen. Is he dead? If he wasn't, he is now. In an instant, his body is yanked down and ripped in half as two giant bipedal monsters covered in white fur begin devouring him. Yetis. Sarah, when you wake up, you discover that you are also suspended upside down, but you don't notice anything else in your immediate area. What am I hanging from? From what you can tell, it looks like a simple hemp and rope hanging from a metal hook in the iced over ceiling. I'm going to start swinging back and forth and try to pull the hook loose. Give me an athletics check. 21. After a few swings, the hook does in fact weaken and slip out of the ice. Take four falling damage. Okay, I need to get out of here. Is there an exit? There is a cave mouth a few feet to your left, but as you get close to it, you hear the sound of something large approaching. I'm going to cover myself in snow and hide. 18. We'll come back to that. Lance, when you wake up, you notice that- Yeah, yeah, Luke in the Wampa Cave. I get it. Actually, unlike your companions, you are not suspended in the air. Huh. Sweet. You instead find yourself lying in a pile of cold skeletons. Yeesh. I, uh, I'd like to get out of here as soon as possible. When you stand up, you notice that your lime green snow saucer is also on the pile of skeletons. Ooh, I'll take that. I mean, at least I can use it as a shield, right? There are cave mouths on both the right and left sides of the chamber. You hear a growling coming from the left. Huh. Well, that answers that question. I'm gonna go right. Waylon, the Yeti in front of you are still eating but not for much longer. All right, uh, I'm gonna cast Minor Illusion and just make a sound as far away from me as possible. And what's the sound? I don't know, I, I guess maybe the sound of something dying? Oh, no, I know. How about the opening guitar riff to Welcome to the Jungle? They both leave the area to investigate. Awesome, I'm gonna see if I can swing myself free. Nine. You've reached full momentum. But as you swing back and forth, the hook holding your rope doesn't budge. Sarah, you're hiding in the snow. Can I see anything? As you peek out, you see that a large yeti is now only a few feet from you. Does he see me? He notices that you're gone and begins looking around furiously. Give me a perception check. 14. You hear the sounds of an electric guitar reverberating through the cave system. The Yeti also hears this and runs off to investigate. I never thought I'd be so happy to hear Guns N' Roses. Lance, as you try to find your way out of the cave, give me a reflex save. 14. A giant clawed hand smashes you across the face. Take eight slashing damage and three cold damage. So am I the only one that's taken any damage? Awesome. Roll initiative. 20. 
Could have used that on my reflex save. You're up first. I'm gonna hold up my snow saucer like a shield and take a defensive stance for the AC bonus. That's a good idea. He swipes again and barely misses you. Give me a perception check. Eight. All at once, the cave is filled with the sounds of electric guitar. Electric guitar? The Yeti roars, grabs his ears, and rushes off to find the sound. You get an AO if you want. Oh, no way. See you later, Yeti dude. I'm gonna try to find my way out of here. Waylon, your futile attempts to get out have resulted in exhaustion. Your maximum hit points have been halved. Yeah, great. So I'll just die even sooner. Slash might buy you a few more minutes, but I'll give you some time to collect your final thoughts. Sarah? I'm running the opposite way of the Yeti. As you do, you bump into Lance. Sarah! Oh, God, you're alive. Just keep your voice down or we won't be. Sorry. Have you seen Waylon? No. Do we have any idea how to get out of this cave? Not really. But both of you give me perception checks. Four. Seventeen. Lance, you hear another sound coming through the cave. This one is more faint. What is it? You can't be certain, but... It sounds like a large cow. A cow? What? Did you hear that guitar music? Yeah, it saved me. I'm pretty sure that's Waylon. Well, at least we're stronger in numbers. I'm gonna go try to find Waylon. The two of you sneak your way through the winding paths of the ice cave. Waylon, you on the other hand are in quite a pickle. <sighs> Let's get it over with. The two Yetis have returned, this time with two of their friends. They all begin approaching you with hungry eyes and slobbering jowls. You two gotta get out of here. Too late. As the monsters approach, Sarah and Lance appear in the opening behind them. Guys, you need to go. Dude, we're not gonna just leave you here. I mean, we could. Okay, fine, we'll fight. Before you can roll initiative, the Yetis charge at you. One more second and you'll be dead. Except. Except what? The side wall of the cave crashes inward, and the yetis are buried in icy rubble. Incidentally, this causes you to fall to the cave floor. Take five falling damage. What happened? Hey there, everybody. Hey, that guy fixed my bear. Before you is Ralph Hancock, seated atop a familiar-looking dire moose. <gasps> Knuckle! Oh, his name's Knuckle. Well, I've been calling him Moose Almighty. What, why would you name a moose Knuckle? What's wrong with naming my moose Knuckle? Nothing wrong with it. I just never heard anybody call a moose Knuckle. Look, Ralph, if I want to call my moose Knuckle, I'm going to call my moose Knuckle. Stop saying it. Oh, by the way, I found your bear friend, too. He's right outside the cave. Really? Guys, that went shockingly well for us. Yeah, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Ralph leads you all out of the cave safely. You should be lucky. You narrowly escaped death by Yeti which is a rare escape. Any idea where we are, by the way? Uh, according to my GPS here, we're not that far from Barry's lair. You knew where his lair was this whole time? Well, I don't know exactly where it is. Just a general idea. We better start looking. As your party discusses what to do, you hear a gravelly voice from behind you say, It's game time, eh? Game time? When you turn around, you see a group of rough-looking men. They're wearing hockey gear. Hockey gear? The men stand around you, sizing you up, and finally one of them speaks. Follow us, please. Uh, where are we going? You didn't think you'd get through the Yukon without playing our national sport, did ya? Yukon? We're in Canada? Oh yeah, did I not mention that? He's talking about ice hockey. And I don't know how to skate. Well, do you know how to rollerblade? Kinda. Not really. Oh, it's a lot like rollerblading, just uh, way harder. Hold on. What are the stakes here exactly? What do we win? If you win, you get to live. Pretty straightforward, eh? You want us to play a life or death hockey game against Canadians? Don't look at me. You're in Barry territory now. This is gonna end bad. Oh, don't worry, gang. I'm from Minnesota. I was born with a hockey stick in my hands. Great. So that's one of us that can play. It can't be that hard. The men lead you to a pond in the middle of nowhere. It's been converted into a makeshift hockey rink with boards and grandstands. There's an audience cheering, awaiting face-off. Guys, maybe if we ask nicely, they'll just kill us now and save us the stress. Suck it up. We've been in worse scenarios than this. Remember when we had to fight all those mimics? There were several. Um, which one? Or that time we got stuck in a time loop in the 19th century and y'all left me to be murdered by Jack the Ripper? Oh yeah. Did we ever resolve that? Not yet. I am not about to let a stupid hockey game get in the way of me killing Barry. Let's go. You are led to a small locker room where you find lockers with your names on them. Waylon, Sarah, Lance, 
Ralph Knuckle, and Sir Barrington the Third. Sir Barrington. I thought his name was Tibbers. Oh, that was a League of Legends joke. I'm actually surprised nobody has any comments on the fact that a moose is playing hockey. Knuckle can do whatever he wants. As you go through the gear in your locker, you notice that there are letters next to your names. I guess I'm the goalie. L.W. What does that mean? It means left wing. You'll be on offense with me and the moose. Uh, Whalen and the bear will be on defense. Does that C mean that you're captain? Well, no. It means I'm the center. I probably should be the captain, though, seeing as how I know most about the game. Hey, if I'm on defense, does that mean I get to hit people? Probably. Isn't that like 90% of hockey? Uh, actually, it's a lot more in-depth than that. See, hockey's a fast-paced and elegant game. Mm, mm, yeah, mm, totally. But it, it is mostly about hitting people, right? If that motivates you to play well. Oh, it does. You have been summoned to the ice. Well, guys, this is it. Good luck. You all skate out under the lights. The aurora borealis fills the night sky as the opposing team stares you down with a Canadian death glare. Dude, who knew that Canadians could be so angry? Do you watch the news? Okie doke, just um, keep the puck moving and don't let them get too close to you. Don't worry, nothing's getting past me. As you sit through both the Canadian and the American national anthem, give me con saves. 16. 18. Yeah, 24. Eight. Lance, you are freezing. Take five cold damage. The, the game hasn't even started. The ref skates over to center ice and drops the puck. Ralph wins the faceoff and passes to Lance. Me? I, uh, shoot it. Fr from center ice? Sure. Give me a ranged attack. Nat 20. Your slap shot sends the puck across the ice, top shelf, back of the net. That's a goal. All right, guys. This is gonna be super easy. Your opponents have won the next faceoff. They're setting up for a one-timer. A what? Timer? There isn't time to explain, just try to block the shot. I'm gonna dive on the ice and try to block it with my body. That's noble of you, but the puck sails over your head. Sarah, give me an athletics check. 19. You snatch the puck out of the air with your glove. Nice save. I'll drop it on the ice and pass it to Ralph. 12. Unfortunately, the puck is intercepted by the Canadian center, who fires off a wrist shot and scores. It's now tied one to one. Sorry, guys. No worries, Sarah. Just keep your chin up, all right? I'd like to ready an action to hit anyone that comes into my zone. Noted. The puck drops and the Canadians win the faceoff. I'm gonna try to steal. Five. The player double deeks and causes you to fall to the ice. Take two falling damage. Well, I was wrong about this being easy. Waylon, an opponent without the puck moves into your zone. Sweet, I'm gonna hit him with a hip check. 22. He falls to the ice like a ton of bricks. The ref promptly blows his whistle and tells you that's two minutes for interference. What? Interference? Yeah. You can't just hit random people, especially if they don't have the puck. Hitting people is the essence of this game. Without that, it's just figure skating with nets. The ref skates you over to the penalty box. Well, great. We are a player down. Now what are we going to do? We got to set up a perimeter around the net. Play your zones, watch for shots, jump in front, and then clear the puck when you can. And stay out of my line of sight. The Canadians are passing around and taking shots where they can. You're all doing a great job of blocking shots. I think I was born to do this. One of the shots bounces off the crossbar and then ricochets off of Knuckles' antlers, who promptly falls over because he's a dire moose on skate. <laughs> Classic Knuckle. One of the Canadian defensemen grabs the puck but is immediately body checked by Barrington, who sends the puck down the ice. Your penalty's over. Can I get out and grab the puck? You can. You're on a breakaway. I'm taking a snapshot. 19. The goalie stops it with his blocker and passes it back up ice. The Canadians are now on a two to one breakaway. My time to shine. I'm gonna cast Cat's Grace on myself. The two forwards pass back and forth and manage to work their way around Barrington. It's now two on out. I'm gonna skate forward a bit to cut down on angles. The wing passes it to the center who's looking for the one timer. Stick side block. 22. The puck hits your stick and bounces away as the buzzer for the first period sounds. Well, crap. That was just period number one? How many periods are there? Two more to go. Nice work out there, guys. Need to get a little more aggressive on offense next period, so let's uh, up our forechecking and then crash the net. Crash the net? What does that mean? Uh, every time we shoot, we charge the net looking for the rebound goal. Oh, that makes sense. The second period begins and the Canadians win the faceoff. I'm gonna bull rush whoever has the puck. 25. You send the right wing flying into his own bench. The Canadians are furious. 
They drop their gloves and charge the ice. Finally, some bloodshed. I'm gonna skate to the center of the ice and wave the other goalie over to fight. I'm gonna punch the closest one to me. I will tackle someone, I guess. It's an all out brawl. Fists are flying. Barrington is literally eating one of the Canadians. Wait, what? Okay, Lance, it's up to you, buddy. Regulation's over, but you were fouled on a breakaway in the final seconds of the game. Oh, God. Um, this... Oh, this is literally the worst thing that could have happened. You'll start at center ice, skate down, and attempt your penalty shot. If you make it, you win. If you don't, you die. Oh, geez. Thank you. What are you nervous about? You've scored, like, three goals this game. Yeah, but one of those got overturned because Knuckle bit the goalie's stick in half. Lance, you can do this, buddy. Just remember what I taught you. Hit him with the razzle-dazzle. You have never said those words to me, but I'll give it a shot. The ref blows his whistle, and you approach the net. Roll your attack. Four. Well, the goalie rolled a nat one. So, congratulations. You made the shot. You win. You get to live. Oh, nice shot, dude. As you head to the locker room to celebrate, you all notice that the hockey rink is moving. Moving? After a moment, you notice that it's opening. And where center ice once was, there's now a mine cart on rail track. This is it. This is how we get to Barry, isn't it? Yep, you just hop on into that mine cart and it'll take you right down to his lair. Good luck, guys. You're probably gonna need it. Wait, you're not coming with us? Wish I could, friend, but uh, well, I'm not written into this part of the campaign, so I guess this is goodbye. Does that mean the bear and the moose stay behind? Yep, only the three of you move forward from here. We'll never forget you, Ralph. And if we make it out of this alive, you're always welcome at our table. Much obliged. Sarah? See ya. Let's go. I want to kill Barry. The metal wheels of the minecart sing as you round a curve and fall deeper into Barry's underground lair. Round the world and home again. That's the adventurer's way. Exactly how fast are we going? Faster. Faster. Everyone give me con saves with disadvantage. 16 and 6. 17 and 10. 5 and... As you descend, your speed seems to be increasing at an alarming rate. The walls around you are filled with horrifying images, and you're frightened. You'll take any ability checks or attacks with disadvantage. Oh, I think I'm gonna be sick. Just power through. It's gonna be worth it. We can't even see where we're going. You're right. We can't. Things are getting pretty hairy. Be prepared and very wary. What is he singing? Now my tone is cautionary. As you fly like a canary Is it spooky? Is it scary? Will you close the gap on Barry? <laughs> He's a worthy adversary In his sinful sanctuary Renowned for vivid commentary Is he more than ordinary? Yes! The hatchet you must bury! Stop it. Oh, thank you. I was running pretty low on rhymes. The minecart comes to a neck-breaking halt, but fortunately for the three of you, you are fully healed and feeling great. Really? You healed us just like that? He thinks we need the help. Oh, I know you do. Barry might be a tool, but he's really good at this game. Half the reason I did that Willy Wonka stuff was to give him a proper intro. What's the other half? I missed the opportunity to make the obvious reference in Train Edition. So, there it is. Well, it was pretty creepy. Thanks. We're wasting time. Where's Barry? His office is right down the hall. By the way, just so you know, moving forward, I'm going to be pretty background. I mean, I'll oversee initiative and stuff, but other than that, you guys are on your own. Are we just supposed to forget your role in this campaign of horrors? Let's get this over with. We're going to his office. As you approach, give me perception checks. 13. 11. 19. Waylon, as you round the corner, you're the first to see Barry. Hello, Barry. Nice to see you again, Waylon. Could I interest you in a D20 future one-shot? I told you. I'm never playing with you again. And what do you call this? This is different, Barry. We are here to kill you. Do you really believe that, Lance? He's doing the thing where he stares into my soul. You ready to die, Barry? Oh, Sarah. I hope you don't plan on fudging any rolls tonight. Normally, that would bother me, but I'm pretty hyper-focused on killing you right now, so how about we just get on with that? Fine by me. Uh, 
Honestly, that was less preamble than I thought there would be, so kudos. Roll initiative. 17. 28. 29. 24. Looks like Barry's up first. Barry. For my first trick, I'll disappear. Where did he go? Coward. I'll end my turn, and as a bonus action, I'll telepathically direct my steel defender to attack Waylon. Um, steel defender? What's your AC? 19. It hits. Take 13 force damage. Off to a great start. Sarah, it's your turn. Okay, I'm gonna cast Moonbeam on the spot that Barry was standing before he disappeared. Ha! Moonbeam. What is that, a second level spell? As if I couldn't handle 2d10 radiant damage. I'll use my bonus action to give myself an inspiration die. Wait. <laughs> what? You took levels in Bard? Yeah. So what? They're not totally worthless. Sorry to interrupt the breakthrough here, but Lance, you're up. Okay. First, I'm going to summon my holy frying pan, and then I'm going to charge the square directly in front of the moonbeam. A frying pan? Are you even listening to yourself? All right. This invisibility stuff is getting old. He can't do it forever. He'll have to fight us eventually. For my bonus action, I'm going to cast Sanctuary on myself and then end my turn. Waylon, it's your turn. Okay. I'm going to cast Fairy Fire on the spot where Barry was standing. I must admit, I'd forgotten about that spell. Really? I wonder if there's any other spells you've forgotten. Nope. Not any important ones anyways. Are you done? Yeah. For now. Great. Well, if it's my turn, I'll roll the save for the radiant damage, which I succeeded. What's the damage? 14. Cool. So seven. And since I'm already visible, I'll go ahead and cast Banishing Smite on my hammer as a bonus action. Next, I'll attack Lance. Does a 23 match or better your AC? Well, you have to make a DC 18 wisdom save to see if you can- Done. Does a 23 match or better your AC? Yes. Excellent. Does 83 damage. What? How is that possible? Oh, it's possible. You're welcome to check my sheet for errors. I made copies. Whatever, man. And how many hit points do you have remaining? Why would I tell you that? It's relevant to your character's location. Fine. 49. You've been banished to a demiplane. I'll direct my defender to continue his assault on Waylon. And in my turn. Must you be so uncool? Take nine more force damage. Sarah, you're up. You can see Barry now. I'm going to drop the moonbeam and charge him. You should know I'm an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Well, I'm an expert at everything. 28 to punch him in the middle of his stupid face. That hits. Eight damage. I hope you've gotten that out of your system, seeing as I'm going to kill you next turn. Bring it on, doofus. All right, it's back to Waylon. I am also going to charge Barry and cast Shillelagh on my staff. And attack twice. 19 and 20. Let's not forget my Steel Defender's AO. Does a 23 match or better? Yes. You know it does. Take 11 more force damage. Happy? Now, do either of my attacks hit? No. And it's my turn. Guys, what if, hear me out, we just surrender? I'd rather die. I'm going to hit Sarah with my hammer and deliver my store D6 of force damage. Natural 20. He's gonna kill her. Yeah? I'm literally in another plane of existence. Barry, roll your damage, but immediately after, I'm gonna need you to give me a reflex save with disadvantage. This can't be happening. 179 damage. Well, at least we tried. Hold on, Sarah. Barry still hasn't given me a reflex save. I must have something that can negate the disadvantage. You don't. I already checked your sheet. Make the save. What is happening? Uh... 15 and three. Something awesome. You all hear a familiar voice. No way. Howdy, gang. I'm just uh, here to kill Barry. Hey, it's that guy. As electricity shoots through Sarah's body, in one swift motion, Ralph Hancock charges across the room and tackles Barry into an interdimensional gate in the floor. Now that's an ending. It, this can't be possible. No one even knows about that gate. Hey, Ralph, I thought you said you weren't part of this story. He wasn't. I wrote him in. Yeah, but why would he do that? Because I'm the DM. And I hate Barry, so. Don't we all? Gee, that felt great. Good thing I studied the schematic of his lair. I can't believe that guy just saved us. I didn't even get to call the Night Marchers. Well, good riddance, you hooligans. You haven't seen the last of me. God, what a tool. 
to think he was just using our play to mine data. How good could the data be? I railroaded you the entire way. Hey. Hey, that's true. Well, now that Barry's gone, what are we going to play next? Any ideas? Well, it's technically still spring break in some places. We could always go back home. Ah, the Sunshine State. See you next week. The end is upon us, I promise you now this is the one, no problem with me. So watch how you talking them where you've been walking, they call me the BBEG. I'm more than a little OP, I do what I want to, yeah that's a mantra. I keep them running and gunning like Contra, yo I'm a monster. Turn it up. What you know about the final boss? I got I'm trying to buy time with the sign of the cross. I redefine high crime and the meaning of loss. I'm off hip, but I body like I'm playing lacrosse. B to the B to the EG, I'm keeping them queasy. I make it seem easy, acknowledge me, I've been demolishing your cities. I'm astonishingly sleazy. I'm the big bad, y'all must be the cast, I'm killing a master, villain a blast, a disaster, really a rap bastard, with the rap fast for the masses, I ravage all races and classes, savage, I can't stop myself, thinking of all the ways I can top myself, on God I can move like a devil, I hope you and your squad are ready for the last level that ends here.